Welcome to Electron Line, and now we're going to talk about electromagnetic radiation and pressure. It turns out that when electromagnetic radiation lands on a surface, it actually puts pressure on that surface. And for, of course, the definition of pressure is force divided by area. So when electromagnetic radiation hits us a brick wall, for example, like sunlight hitting a wall, it actually pushes against the wall, it pushes force on the wall, and force divided by area is pressure. How do we calculate the pressure from electromagnetic radiation? Well, we can actually do it in a very clever way. We can find an association between pressure and intensity of the light. How do we do that? Well, what are the units for pressure? Well, the units for pressure is force divided by area, and of course the units then would be newtons divided by meter squared. All right, so how do we manipulate the concept of intensity of light, and we know what intensity is, that came from the pointing vector. Remember that intensity is equal to the magnitude of the pointing vector, which means it's equal to 1 over mu sub naught times E times B, where these are the RMS values of the oscillations of the electric field and the magnetic field inside the radiation. All right, well, the unit of intensity is equal to, well, we know that intensity is power per unit area, and power, well, the units for power is equal to watts per area would be square meter. So here we have watts per square meter, those are the units for intensity. Okay, well, that's not quite newtons per square meter, but it's close. So what is a watt? Well, a watt is a joule per second. So we can say this is equal to a joule divided by meter squared times seconds. All right. Now, a joule is a newton meter. So this is equal to a newton times meter divided by meter squared times seconds. All right, now notice that newton per meter squared is what we have over here. That's the unit of pressure. So pressure times meters per second, which is velocity. So that means that intensity is really pressure times velocity. So now let's write that down. So intensity is equal to pressure. Now this is power. So let me write that out. This is power and this is pressure. So this P stands for pressure. That stands for power. So sometimes we use the same letter for two different things and that gets confusing. So intensity is equal to power or pressure times velocity, which means pressure is equal to intensity divided by velocity. Now, of course, with radiation, the velocity is the speed of light, which means that the pressure caused by electromagnetic radiation is equal to the intensity divided by the speed of light. Ha! Ah, that means that I can find the pressure of sunlight simply by knowing the intensity and dividing by the speed of light. And the pressure, of course, would be force per unit area or newtons per square meter. So if I want to find the pressure of sunlight, so the pressure of sunlight, and so this is pressure, so that we don't get confused here, pressure, that's equal to the intensity divided by the speed of light. And of course, the intensity of sunlight when it reaches the Earth is 1,361 watts per square meter divided by the speed of light, which is 3 times 10 to the 8 meters per second. And let's go ahead, calculate that. That's 1,361 divided by 3e to the 8. And that gives us 4.54 times 10 to the minus 6. So that would be 4.54 times 10 to the minus 6. And the pressure would be newtons per square meter. And that's the pressure of sunlight when it reaches the Earth coming from the sun. It's kind of interesting. It's a very small number, of course. So it's not like when we walk outside and sunlight hits us, we get knocked over by the pressure of sunlight. But it does offer some minute amount of pressure and it can actually be utilized in space. We can actually send spacecraft in space, have solar sails that catch the light of the sun, and the light of the sun, the radiation, can actually push the solar sails and accelerate spacecraft through space. We've done some experiments with that. They're marginally successful. It's not very easy to do. But it turns out that um, the Kepler telescope, which last year became unusable because one of the gyroscopes stopped working, they're now actually using the pressure of sunlight to rectify the position of the Kepler, making do because it has a one missing um, 
uh, gyroscope and it can actually orient the spacecraft over time to certain positions so they can still use it and then now continue to utilize the Kepler uh, Space Telescope to hunt for planets out in space using the pressure of sunlight. And this is how we calculate the pressure of light or the pressure of any sort of electromagnetic radiation.